This is a HeadGum Podcast. This thing working? Yeah. It's working. Sure. We're doing things. Hello. All right. Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Chicago, what is happening? Hi, everybody. Uh, we have taken the stage. Oh, oh there you go. go. Uh, more of that. <laughs> This is uh, it's a little weird, no? Yeah. We're back. People. We're doing shit There's in people front of here. people. <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause, yeah, God damn. damn it. Here's the thing. We weren't sure how any of this was going to go. And I got to say, Chicago, you kick fucking ass. Look at you all. Yes. <laughs> we want to thank you for taking the vaccine. <laughs> seriously, seriously, thank you for being responsible and not assholes. It's very nice. Very nice of you. They've taken my daughter and they started giving her this vaccine. <laughs> Now she's what? got 5G swimming around in her system. Her arms are big as magnets now. Uh, she's, now she's safe in a, an HG hotspot. <laughs> I, I took the vaccine and I just start pissing my pants whenever I drink. <laughs> Dude, that guy, that guy in the trailer yeah. pees his pants in public an awful lot. Quite a lot, it and seems. I, I think he thinks nobody notices. Mm. In the pictures, he doesn't seem to. He just seems to be like, hey. Because <laughs> he doesn't know where the fuck he is at any given time. He's blackout drunk. This is a real true. thing. You can Google it. He he just, when he needs to go, he needs to go, and he goes. And I think it's admirable. See, well, no, I don't even think it's that. I think he's I think he's an early zipper. I think he starts <laughs> pissing. Dude, wait a oh, wait, wait, second. So, so does he like, he like cut the scrote? Not cut this. That's not blood, Eric. I mean, he's just got like five seconds more of piss than you usually would have <laughs> before you zip up. And that's if, where it all comes from. If you say so. Chris I think Kevin. so. <laughs> I, I've, I've thought about this a lot. Early zipper, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> he's zipping so early, he's pissing in his pants. He's uh, very busy because he's an early zipper. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? I, I got nothing. I, oh, I got this, some, sure. this is some like old 1970s television. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah kind yeah. of a, almost a Johnny Carson situation. Oh, right. Almost. Yeah. If he had a small, like small, you know, testicles, call him a squirrel nut zipper. <laughs> Uh, holy shit <laughs> yes I'm gonna go yes on that one yeah alright all right. you wanna see if we can do this yeah, yeah. Sure. give it a shot it's been, it's been a couple years mm -hmm. last night worked out alright so we do it ready my name is Andrew Jupin I'm Chris Cabin Eric Siska Steven Sadak and we are We Hate Movies from New York City thank you for coming out Chicago yeah, thank you everybody <laughs> the pretzels are being served <laughs> look at that love that shit Tip generously, by the way. These are tough times, folks. Mm -hmm. Tip generously. Now, the film in question, as you saw, Taken, uh, from the year 2008. And boy, mm -hmm. can you fucking smell it with this oh, boy. movie. Huh? <laughs> it's always nice to be back in Chicago. It's also always nice to watch a Liam Neeson movie because you go through the filmography and be like, what's that? <laughs> 17 movies in three years? How's that possible? Dude is the king of secret movies. Just one absolute of them, king. One of them is called Unknown. <laughs> they don't even know what the movie is. That's a, no, dude, you know what that was? That was like, a, oh, hey, director of that movie. We got the poster printed, and he was like, the poster for what? And he was like, the, the, the movie that we're making with Liam Neeson, where they have the secret corn formula. Uh -huh. And he's like, but we didn't decide on a title yet. And then the dude unrolled the poster <laughs> and just said, Unknown. And they had to go with it. Yeah, it was either, there was two, it was unknown or we'll figure it out later. Yeah. And it was, we'll figure it out later, just was too many words on a poster. If you kidnap my daughter, we'll figure it out. <laughs> it totally still yeah. works. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, we'll be figuring it out later when we walk amongst the tombstones. <laughs> or when I'm driving a fucking snowplow. What was that one? What was that one called? 
I, I forgot. Cold There's... pursuits. Yes. Yeah, so is that right? No. Is that right? I think, yeah. I think you might be right. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, thank you. Liam yeah. Neeson's biographer right here in the front row. That's excellent. <laughs> thank you for coming out. Happy to have you on hand. You, 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 know, nice you, know, you. you know about the pissing, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to leave the pissing out of me book, right? <laughs> uh, 2008, this is a very, like, obviously, uh, the world was changing, uh, not as fast as it should. But it's a very George W. Bush kind of era terrorism oh movie. Of course it is. Yeah, oh yeah, big time. The whole movie is you better not leave American soil. <laughs> Look what's going to happen to all the pretty girls if you leave American soil. We were just like millimeters away from a Freedom Fries joke. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Movie. Just anywhere could have gone. Yeah, he, and it's like, obviously there's like tor torture going on. And it's like, we're in the audience like, yeah, he did it. He got the bad guy. Yeah, <laughs> zapping well. balls, loving it. <laughs> I love it. Movies when they zap balls, and I remember yeah. about all the shit. Yeah, all, all the balls we zapped along the way. A, yeah. a lot of those are uh, Pornhub, or <laughs> yeah, that's the extreme tab, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Ball the zap zappers, tab. yeah. Oh, the zap tab. I like that. <laughs> uh, I don't go to browsers. I go to zappers. Uh, it's a different, <laughs> it's a different site all all together. It's all uh, exclusively standard deaf videos. <laughs> The audio is all out of sync on everyone, but it's on purpose. Zappers is a literal brick and mortar porn website. Like, you have to actually drive there and go inside. Welcome to Zappers. We have standard definition pornography. We make the tapes out back if you'd like to see one be made. Or star in one. <laughs> My wife, Inger, sits in the back and dubs all the porno tapes. She's also the talent scout for the group. Yeah, you can find us at www rural route nine up the road past the gas station <laughs> dot com. Sadly, Zappers is going out of business. <laughs> Thanks a lot, pandemic and internet pornography. <laughs> So this movie starts mm. with uh, a, a videotape of uh, a birthday party. Right. Uh, and it's all VHS. Looks like there's going to be tracking problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, Liam Neeson bolts awake. You're telling me this kid's dead. Mm. If yeah, this is yeah, how they're is, opening, yes. it's a bunch of little kids. And, yep. like, and then he wakes up and he's, and I'm like, oh, so she's dead. And he's going to go kill the guys who killed her already. No, no, no. She's alive. Somehow. She's alive, and also he's dreaming in VHS quality. Yes. <laughs> Which is yeah, the he, dumbest thing. He wakes up, and there's no TV on. <laughs> no, it's just it, him in his sad, sick, loner oh. apartment, cold Chinese food everywhere. I, I want to see that video of Kim's first birthday again. Better put it into my chest vagina video <laughs> drum stuff. <laughs> Dude, remake Videodrome with Liam Neeson. That'd be Absolutely. Something. That'd be something. Get that fucking uh, James whatever stink off at Woods. Uh, it's CGI chest vaginas. I don't know. That Practical effects bad. are yeah. bust. Yeah, yeah, you're talking it. about yeah, going from James Woods to Liam Neeson, both on the low end of nice people. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, not, uh, not, not, neither of which a cool dude. <laughs> Nary a cool dude to be found at that party. But for Liam Neeson, I mean, if you're a Central Park uh, handsome cab driver, yeah. he loves your ass. Oh, He'll sure. fight for you to the death. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck those horses. That's a business. <laughs> I, Maybe yeah. that didn't like get out of New York City, but there was a thing where like our mayor, when he got elected, was like, you know what we should probably not have is that heinous handsome cab shit. Those poor horses are getting abused. I, and everybody was like, you know what? You're right. That makes total sense. Except Liam Neeson, who was crusading that these guys were going to lose their jobs and fuck the horses. You can always make more. <laughs> fuck the horses. Yes. Yeah. He's big like, on that. Yeah. Not yeah. like not how you're thinking of it. Oh, all right. I, I guess I was at Zappers still. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to announce that for some reason, Liam Neeson is now the head of the union for the handsome cab riders of New York City. We need representation. Dude, that, listen, if he. And maybe it'll even happen. He's going to make a movie where he is a handsome cab driver. Oh, yeah. And he's like whipping a horse through Central Park chasing somebody. They've taken my horse. <laughs> it should just be the horse chase scene from True Lies. Yes. But with, with, with uh, Liam out there. Two hours of that. Go ahead. Call out any glue factories you happen to see. <laughs> <laughs> Look around for anyone having a picnic playing harsh shoes. <laughs> But yeah, he's dreaming in VHS. Um, he fast forwards through the trailers and he wakes up and sees <laughs> he sees that. And I guess 
So he, we find out he's like a CIA, an ex CIA guy, mm-hmm. uh, and he's moved back to LA to be close to his daughter. He's retired from the CIA and like he's living in like a lone gunman shack. <laughs> he's going to this like hardware store or wherever he buys this fucking karaoke machine, dude. I <laughs> on thought- a weekly basis, <laughs> like he's on layaway. Dude, this is what it is, dude. I one hundred and seventy think- bucks at. Most, Listen, I guarantee it. I think he's doing research at a pawn shop. Okay. <laughs> like, I had me eye on this karaoke machine. <laughs> Gonna buy it for me daughter's birthday. Hey, here you go, Kimmy. There's on, uh, only a little blood on this karaoke machine. <laughs> it was used in a family annihilation, but I swear, it's like new. The <laughs> CD player is broken, but you can hook an auxiliary cable just, in and play whatever you want. Just ignore that little sticker that says property of Chris Benoit. <laughs> oh, my God. It hasn't even been 15 minutes. It, so oh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think they're playing? Simply the best? Uh, <laughs> he, he annihilated his family more than 15 minutes ago. More than 15 minutes ago. We're not arguing that fact, Eric. Right. <laughs> Look, we know the family is dead in the ground for it, a long time, but I'm saying we haven't been on stage 15 minutes. You're already talking about a family tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> That was the 15 minutes they, I was referring. They like it. <laughs> I love the guy at the pawn shop who's just like, hey, man, if I charged you like 10 bucks every time you came in to research this karaoke machine, you would have owned it five times <laughs> over. What are you fucking? It's a karaoke yeah, machine. Is that, I'm not selling a fucking car here. It's not worth my time to tell you about the karaoke machine on a weekly <laughs> basis. Regular, yeah, he comes in and he's just like, oh, fuck again. Okay. Yes. Yes, 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 sir. The CD player is still a six disc changer. (laughs) I haven't taken any away. I haven't added any more discs. It's a six disc changer. And this is a piece of shit for a former CIA agent who should have, you know, all these accounts and God knows where. It's this piece of shit. And they this salesman has got him believing like, oh yeah, this Gwen Stefani uses this one. (laughs) Blake Shelton loves it. All the other people. Yeah, it's $50. They just like the design. Yeah, Elvis practiced on this. (laughs) That is a weird thing, right? Because he's like, my daughter wants to be a singer. So you're buying a karaoke machine so she can practice? I get... This is a bad birthday present. It's a bad gift. Uh, He brings it to her and... Maggie Grace is like 25 when this movie is, <sighs> is. It's like she's supposed to be 17, but she's playing it like she's nine and a half years old. Yeah. <sighs> Daddy, oh my God. Dude, they even have her run. You know when like little kids run and it's like yeah. they haven't been using their legs for that long? <laughs> you know what I mean? And like she's kind of doing that and like swinging her fucking elbows. It's like. Where did you learn to run? They are dressing her in rompers with hearts and unicorns on it. She's 25. That's that's how the family annihilators can catch them so fast. (laughs) Uh You're not playing Scout on Broadway for fucking To Kill a Mockingbird. You know what I mean? Like, the camera can see that you're 25. She's dressed like strawberry shortcake through the whole like beginning of this movie. Speaking of Broadway, I'm shocked we haven't seen like Taken the Musical yet. Ooh, I like that. You're getting taken. (laughs) Call out any tattoos you see. I have a very special set of skills. Yes, dude, totally. And that's the song, like his hero's journey song. Yeah. yeah. And I can uh, see this happening. And now I'm shooting your wife. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, see? Oh, yes, my wife sucks. <laughs> oh, yes, my ex wife sucks. Dude, he hates Famke Jansen in this movie. Something yeah. fierce, huh? Holy moly. But I bet his best memories of her uh, in VHS mind, right? Sure. They're probably all tracking errors, and it's like, you can't, <laughs> I can't see my wife how I remembered her. Oh, fuck, I taped over it with a couple of them X Men movies <laughs> she was in. <laughs> and oh, what? Now, watch this now? A baseball game? <laughs> Oh, look, some pornography from Zappers got in here. I I even taped the one with the blob in it. I hated this movie. What the hell's wrong with me? And, you know, he brings her. uh, The idea is it's it's a divorced guy uh, fairy tale, this film. And because it's like. The uh, the whole thing is like his uh, Fanko Jansen 
smoke show, obviously, ex-wife, but also a cold bitch. <laughs> and she's married to Xander Berkeley. And he's like the richest man in the world. Yeah, yeah, dude. This is like if Bezos wasn't totally bald. <laughs> yeah. If Bezos was kind of hot. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Speaking of smoke shows, Xander Berkeley yeah. in this movie. <laughs> oh, man, you know, Taken Four, they should go to space. <laughs> We're taking off. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> wow, I, I slid it right in. Yeah. You know what? Uh. Goes to show you, folks, sometimes you just got to go with your gut. <laughs> okay, You never know. Take a fucking chance. Okay, Kimmy, you're in space now, and you're about to be taken by the aliens. Call out. <laughs> call out the color, color of goop you see. I'm sorry. Are we <laughs> saying aliens? <laughs> I'm, I'm from Ireland. <laughs> and that's call, how they say it. It's true. Call out the... Are they gray aliens? <laughs> I love the Michael Mann boxing biopic, Aliens. <laughs> With Will Smythe. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's got this shit uh, karaoke machine, and like she's like, "Oh, thanks, Daddy," and like gives him. A we hug. gotta say, hang on though. It's at like this compound. Oh, of course. There's like this security guard who's like, "Uh, are you on the guest list for this teen's birthday party?" And he's like, "I'm our fucking father." <laughs> And then this guy's like, uh, I work for her father. And dude, this is something you never want to hear from Liam Neeson. He gets right in this dude's face and he's like, I'm a real father. <laughs> Ooh, shit. That dude just got some new information at work today. That's what that was. <laughs> Xander Berkeley's going around like, yeah, I sired that yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, Xander Berkeley's got a horse house and another house for the party. Oh. You can go to one or the other. We, uh, we generally call them stables, not, <laughs> that not a is, horse house. That is a horse house. It's bigger than a stable. Oh, got it. Two okay. stories. So does the horse have its own pool? Yeah, of course. Seven oh, horses picked to live in a house. <laughs> when horses, horse house LA. Yeah, so the horses stop being fake and start being real. Uh -huh. This show's getting haywire. <laughs> Yeah, see, sometimes it's also good to not take chances. <laughs> so, you know, it's 50-50. Sometimes you'll just fuck yourself. It's a right. dancing act. But, like, oh, Fam Famous Jans is like, oh, you know, she stopped wanting to sing when she was nine, you idiot. And she's like, she's an adult now. And she's like, Daddy, a pony! <laughs> like, she literally, like, moves from the bad karaoke machine. And, like, it's not like, oh, he bought her a new car. Or maybe he bought her the trip to Paris. Or, like, something a 17-year-old girl would actually like. But, no, it's a pony! Dude, and she even climbs. This is a yeah. grown ass woman. Yes. Climbs out on this horse, like, eh, eh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Xander Berkeley's got that great line after he presents this horse, and he's just like, hey, Brian. <laughs> oh, you want to yeah. stick around? Uh, a little better than a karaoke machine. <laughs> wow, uh, that gift looks like real shit. <laughs> Is that a karaoke machine made of a horse? This one is. Oh, you know, it just comes out. You know, I told Rosa not to leave her garbage on the lawn. Oh, is this your? Oh, no, it's your gift. Oh, awesome, Brian. <laughs> wow. Didn't want to get her voice lessons or anything, huh? Just a karaoke boy. Okay. I just, I will go to my grave not understanding this decision for a birthday present. It just <laughs> is dumb. And he winds up going to, he's having a sad night, and his boys come. You know when the boys come in? Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. When you and your boys that did terror across the nation. <laughs> <laughs> you and the old, the old boys are back yeah. telling the old terror get stories. together talking about all the old days, man. Fucking pulling fingernails <laughs> off and waterboarding. It's a BBBQ. The extra B is for black water. <laughs> uh -huh. Remember them? Yeah. <laughs> They're still around. Ah, oh, Blackwater. Bad. Remember Paul? Yeah, da, da, da. <laughs> You should do some more early aughts stuff. Huh? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then they're doing the thing that, like, bros do, which is like, oh, man, you know, your daughter doesn't love you. Forget her, dude. Come back and do more torture with us, bro. <laughs> we'll go back on the room. Remember the good old days? You know, Liam Neeson, I didn't want to say anything, man, but I was at that birthday party, and it looks like your daughter never learned to run properly. <laughs> Why don't you come back and be a terrorist with us? I mean, terrorist interrogate. Well, no. Nope. You know, I was stabbing a 15-year-old in the eye the other day, <laughs> and blood spurted in my mouth. And I was like, where is Brian for this? <laughs> Brian is he? would love this. <laughs> Brian, was it weird attending a birthday party and not bombing it? Was that, like, different? <laughs> 
Well, I've never been on the other side of it. You know what I mean? I've always been the one bombing the and birthday apparently party. Apparently, he got in trouble because he left an assignment, probably bombing a birthday, to attend his daughter's birthday around the world. And he got demoted, and then he retired, I guess, in disgrace. <laughs> All because you absolutely had to attend a different birthday party? Sh showing emotion is a big problem in that organization. <laughs> yeah, he has, to he has to face Rumsfeld after. He's like, this is why we didn't give you Guantanamo, okay? <laughs> You're, You're always not up for the job. <laughs> You're running off to birthday parties all the time. Oh, Guantanamo would have been a great gig. I'm a fiend for mojitos. <laughs> Uh, just, oh, man, just a couple of miles from Miami. The family could come visit. We do Disney World. I work on Guantanamo on the weekends. <laughs> I can wrap birthday presents so well because I used to wrap exploding cigars that I would de deliver to Fidel Castro. Dude, that is a special set of skills that is unadvertised in this movie. His present oh, wrapping ability. So good, Holy right? Holy fuck. Did you, anyone watch the movie beforehand? The intricate birthday wrapping? Oh, my yes. God. That's why they're so good at bombing stuff, because it looks like a real present. When I wrap with something, <laughs> yeah, it yeah. looks like a bomb. <laughs> Just soft corners. <laughs> oh, the softest of corners. <laughs> Just like me. <laughs> Dude, I, I wrap a birthday present or a Christmas gift or something. It looks like I left it in the fucking washing machine. No, and, I, the, and then my like handwriting comes into play as well, and it looks like, Remember when Jack Nicholson, as the Joker, wrote to Kim Basinger, gave her a present, and it says, urgent on it, and like the R is backwards? Uh -huh. That's what my handwriting looks like. And right. it's like, happy birthday, my wife. <laughs> You're also labeling it with red lipstick, too, just <laughs> exactly. like the Joker was doing. And I always forget her name, so I write, yeah. my <laughs> wife, <laughs> my wife. Happy birthday, my wife. I take you, my wife, to be my wife. Dude, also, Famke Jansen's name in this movie is Lenore. Mm -hmm. So me lost Lenore, me ex-fucking wife. Oh, never more, I guess. I shall live in Lenore's house never more. <laughs> The sad fucker. Uh, but he, well, he, she, he keeps calling her Lenny. I guess that's what she was in the old days. Yeah, and the fucking just, party days, oh, dude. Yeah, the dude. torture days. <laughs> she used to be a really big Simpsons fan, but that just faded away. <laughs> so these friends are... It's like, what you used to call them, Carl? Is yes. that what you <laughs> All right. So you got uh, uh, Leland Orser is one of these friends. He's the guy who... Uh, is in seven with the the knived dildo. Of course, mm -hmm. you'll remember. And I did. Yeah. I did. He told me to fuck her. <laughs> you could see the uncut version of that at Zappers, I think. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Fincher cut it out, but Zappers put it right back in. <laughs> That's our biggest seller right there. And they 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 convince him to take. They're like, look, man. All right, we get it. You maybe don't want to like pull off fingernails anymore. Waterboarding. You don't have the heart in it. But look, twenty five hundred bucks to basically be like a bodyguard at a concert for like a Britney Spears-esque or like a Shakira-type performer. And he's ready to wet his whistle because uh, it, an assassin is lurking in the shadows of this fucking arena. The woman, uh, the, 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 the artist's name is She-Ra, by the way. Like, honest to goodness, She-Ra. No one... Yeah. And her, her big hit, I Have the Power. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's opening for the masters of the universe. <laughs> He man and everybody's gonna be there. <laughs> oh fuck, Orko's not on tonight playing bass. What happened? <laughs> if those were real guys, you would definitely go watch them, right? Oh my god, yeah, the Masters of the Universe playing mm -hmm. a band. I guess it would be kind of like Guar or something. Yeah, like yeah. a Skeletor situation. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I thought you meant like literally like the monsters from that cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but like if it's Guar, it's like dudes in costumes but what if it, and whatnot. What, what if they were real? Shit, dude, I think that's a Liam Neeson movie right there. <laughs> Man at Arms definitely playing the drums for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think Crawl was that movie. He's in Crawl. Oh, yeah. that's right. Of course. Great movie. Crawl. Yeah, yes. better than this. Yeah, hey, that's true. And <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll get there. Thanks for the tip. Oh, the request. <laughs> by the way, the request lines are open. Uh, and by that, I mean just shout shit out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, anytime. <laughs> there All right, we no, go. No, 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 no. We were joking. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so, like, but he's like, yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, all you have to do is walk this, uh, this um, uh, pop artist from here to there, and he goes, and 
she's like warming up and he does the thing a fucking bodyguard is not supposed to do. He's just standing there watching the door. He's like, you've got a beautiful voice. And she's like, <laughs> fuck. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I got one of these guys. We got a jerk offer here. Oh. We got a jerk offer here. No, there no, you. no. You under, you, could you give my daughter a million dollars? Exactly. She, could, could, you, could you make her career? See, that's the thing. It's one thing where she's, because she's just doing like some warm ups, you know, doing some scales. And that's when he makes the comment about your beautiful voice. And she's like, all right, pervert, whatever. But then, like, this woman is going, like, she's playing the fucking Staples Center. Like, yeah. this is a big gig, right? And she's going to walk out of the dressing room, and he's like, ah, really quickly, my daughter wants to be a singer. Any tips? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, here's a tip. Shut the fuck up. I'm working right now. Do you happen to have a record contract on you? I could just borrow it for a minute. Uh, before kidding. you get on stage, can I get your head real quick? <laughs> I know you're in one, one mode right now, but can I just fuck that up really quickly? After the show, could you teach me an instrument? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's important to underline all this focusing on singing. Maggie Grace doesn't sing a single note in this whole movie. It's bullshit. Well, they're just trying to make her not kidnap meat in this movie. Like I, I guess. They guess. Like, they like kind of bookend it with like anything, and that's what this is, I guess. Right, they're trying to contextualize her as a real person. Yes. But then you wouldn't call your movie Taken. That sounds like an object was stolen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's not kidnapped. It's, it's not abducted. No. Oh, you're, t- you're taking my property. Yeah. <laughs> That abducted. To me. It was that Taylor Lautner movie. Yeah, yeah, I did not see it. Did anyone see Abducted? Big fan of Abducted right there. <laughs> wow, look at that. So what's that? It's like Taken, but he's like a werewolf. <laughs> no. That's his special set of skills. And that exactly. You got it dead on right there. Uh, nice, all right. He's abducted by aliens. <laughs> Aliens. I'm not getting it. I don't over. know why it, I'm saying it, but I like it. It hits all it right. Hits, it hits my ear really well. <laughs> and uh, so, like, whatever. She's like, fuck off. And then she's like, you know, yeah, here's advice find a new career. And he's like, wow, these pop stars are not like us. <laughs> <laughs> At least when I'm torturing terrorists, they're not talking back like this. <laughs> I bet they're great singers, too, when you really get like the juices flowing, you know, uh-huh. the electrodes. Sure. And- sure. Yeah. And <laughs> whatever. She, like, you know, she, she does her thing. Uh, Maggie Grace calls him like, "Hey, I want I want to meet you tomorrow, just you and me." And he's like, "Oh, a daddy daughter date? I'm really excited about this." <laughs> now, quick, Kimmy, before I hang up the phone, you're not gonna sandbag me and secretly bring your fucking mother, are you? <laughs> oh, be- before no! that, I better change my tape before that lunch so I could remember it in VHS. <laughs> you won't believe it, boys. I have a date with my daughter friend tomorrow. <laughs> And they're all like, oh, that's great, man. That's really cool, dude. Well, yeah. that's, it's hilarious because they've gone five minutes without doing something manly, so they all have to go to a side room to play poker in the middle of all of this and just, like, hash it out between them. It's your standard, like, where all these, like, ex-whatever is talking about the old days in South America toppling Did, governments and whatnot. Don't you ever miss Eric Prince, man? <laughs> <laughs> he, he threw the best parties. His oh. sister fucking sucks, though. <laughs> Former Secretary of Education jokes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, but yeah, as he's walking her out, we do like we do like three minutes of the bodyguard for no reason. There's this guy with a knife. What is yeah. this guy's story? I want his movie. I want this movie. Yeah. I want like if it was the taken special edition DVD and it's a side movie with just this dude and his motivations leading up to this failed assassination attempt. <laughs> also, like, what are we doing? I saw the preview. I'm in the theater because of the special set of skills. I don't need it teased out like this. This guy just comes out of the, around the corner with a fucking Switch Army knife like, hey, Oswald! <laughs> <laughs> he dismantles this guy. It's nice. Instantly. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of hilarious. Yeah. And now she's like, well, I guess I was a jerk when I was kind of rude to you before, and then you saved my life. Hey, you know, I... I'll get your, your daughter vocal vocal lessons. Or like and- she can meet my vocal coach yeah. and see what, you know, see what, what he says. What yeah. we got there. Mm-hmm. We're not yeah. going to give you anything to judge. She's not going to sing a funk a note, <laughs> but it will happen. It'll happen later. And now he's like, oh, I've got, now I've got a real birthday present. Stuart can sit and fucking spin. I got She-Ra's vocal coach. Better than a fucking horse. Let's see that fucking horse teacher to sing, eh, horse? <laughs> Nay. <laughs> yeah, Stuart. Skeletor took me out during the last set, you know. 
Uh, so he gets sandbagged at this diner because in walks Lenore and it's this whole, like he thinks he's there for like just a nice lunch, you know, get rid of the, you know, the Xander Berkeley-ness of it all. Nope. This is a daddy. Can I go to Paris conversation? Ooh, this is awkward. This dude is getting sandbagged. Oh, man. And she's like, oh, you know, I want to go to Paris to see art. And he's like, why would you want to see art? <laughs> <laughs> you got the fucking internet. Look it up on Google. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'm not very comfortable. You know what? Hey, oh, it's just, yeah, it's me. I'm, I'm going to go. It's me and Amanda or my friend who's two years old. She's 19. And then, like, her cousins are going to be there. It's like, all right, how about a compromise? How about I go too? And you <laughs> won't notice I'm there. You're a redwood tree. Of course <laughs> I'm going to notice you. But no, this is this is where you're he usually, slips up. You're usually covered in blood. Yes, we're going to notice you. <laughs> But this is where he slips up because all he has to do is be like, yes, okay, you can definitely go to Paris. And then use all your super spy shit to follow her. Don't ask permission to spy on somebody. <laughs> Just spy on somebody. Yeah, totally. And, um, you know, Famke Jansen, he says no. Famke Jansen starts to twisting the screws, which is just sort of like, hey, remember when you ruined my life? You know? <laughs> well, you're missing. Maggie Grace starts crying and weeping, holds her Care Bear, and She's runs out of the restaurant. <laughs> Dude, that's the other thing, though. Like, it's not just her fault because Liam Neeson's like, oh, yeah, here's your raspberry banana milkshake, extra sprinkles, or whatever. And I'm <laughs> like, it, man. she can fucking vote. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're done with your milkshake, I'll help you change your diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go to KB Toys after this? Ooh. No, I want to go to Paris, do blow, and have sex. That's what, <laughs> that that's, the, that's the trip I'd like. Uh, so he comes to the house afterwards and agrees, you know, this can happen. I have some rules, though. You got to call me when you're there is one. I need the phone number of these people. Yeah, I want to, you know, call me when you land. It's your classic dad move, which no one ever does. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Of course not, because it's just, it's such a schlep getting off the plane and going mm. through the airport. I'll call you when I get to the fucking hotel, okay? Oh, uh, yeah, the airport, it's its so terrible going through an airport. Plus, you know, these taxis are so expensive. <laughs> Dude. Would you uh, like to share? They meet this guy. I'm Peter. And I don't know what this accent is on Peter. <laughs> uh, he's trying a bunch of things at once, maybe. I looked yeah, yeah. him up, and he's supposedly French, but it's like a Borat type of amalgamation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is weird. It's weird when Maggie Grace walked up and he was there taking a picture of her with the cell phone and went, very nice. <laughs> He's like, all of Europe is one guy. Yeah. He went to the accent soda machine and put every kind in one cup <laughs> down the line. Mellow yellow, too. But we, we're, 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 we're missing one piece. On her way out, you know, he, he's like, I'm driving you to the airport. He drives to the airport. He finds a map with all these little stops on oh, it. Shit. He's looking yeah. at this. And he's like, What's going on? And Fabka Jansen's like, listen, we lied to you. She's actually not just going to Paris. She's going to all of Europe because she's following the band U2 around. No, she's not. <laughs> Wait a second. U2. <laughs> what is wild is that is how this movie tells you the script was originally written in 1992. Of course. <laughs> because what fucking 17-year-old in 2008... Is following around you two? Are you fucking kidding me? I mean, even he is kind of like, really? You two? <laughs> what? You're sure it's not Little Wayne or anything like that? Does she want revenge for getting that album stuck on the iPod and she couldn't get it off? It just, what are you talking about? And I mean, like, what? I'm sorry, it just, it just takes me a while. And she's not going there to try to stab them or nothing? <laughs> It's just, that's why people go to concerts. Yeah, obviously, that's why you're all here tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to stab us. Mm -hmm. Hey, Siska. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> and uh, but like you know, he's like, all right, I guess, I guess, I guess I have to deal with this. They go, and yes, on the way out, uh, on the way out of the, the Paris airport, they become the world's biggest fucking marks. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. Dude, they might as well be wearing, like, American flag neckerchiefs. <laughs> I mean, it is just, like, put a sign on yourself that says, please kidnap me. And like, you're taking, you're getting your picture taken outside the airport you just came in from. <laughs> just kidnap me, please. I'm just, you know, the sights, the airport. Yes. Ah, yes, the exit ramp on the Charles de Gaulle airport. <laughs> Excellent. We're seeing everything on this trip. It's art. It's beautiful. <laughs> 
but that's you, you, Eric, you, you uh, presage it was like, oh, the taxis are very expensive. Ooh. Can we split one? And they're like, yeah, sure. You're so cute. And I am Peter Al. <laughs> <laughs> So expensive. <laughs> expensive. <laughs> and the thing is, they all get off together. So you don't see the cab ride, but I kind of feel like when they get in, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to one, two, four, rude, or whatever the fuck. Uh, where are you going, Peter? He's like, oh, it's so weird. I'm going to the same place. I had no idea. We- wow, what a weird surprise this is. Wait a minute. And you are on the fifth floor? Or I am on the fourth. <laughs> oh, wow. This is weird, no? <laughs> Oh, yeah, we took the whole fifth floor. Do you want the access code for the door, too? <laughs> okay, we well, can give you that. Why don't we say our favorite movie on three? One, two, three. You say it first. <laughs> <laughs> I also was going to say The Goonies. Oh, my God. Wow. We both love the mo- same movie the same much. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think... Watching this movie, and you know, a couple weeks ago we were talking about uh, an American world from Paris on the show. Listen, right? Excellent movie. Excellent movie. Good one. <laughs> no, but it just it makes me think, right? Like at this point, if you go to France and some weirdo invites you to a party, mm-hmm. just say no. <laughs> yeah. You're either getting eaten by werewolves or you're getting fucking taken. Yeah. yeah. It's a lose lose situation. You're gonna be taken or. You're going to be abducted by aliens or <laughs> eaten by werewolves. I'm sorry, it's warwolves. <laughs> war, 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 aliens and warwolves. <laughs> war. But it yeah. just sounds like you're choking on something. Oh. <laughs> no, I am. Yeah, he's like, oh, there's a cool party tonight. He's like, what floor are you on? They're like, the fifth floor. He's like, wow, I can't believe that worked. Okay, oh, no, cool. Uh, he's like calling his guys and he's just like, yes, I have two. They are very dumb. <laughs> they are like embarrassingly dumb. You're, you're going to have to check, but I'm pretty sure door is unlocked. <laughs> so it's also 2008, so they get in here and like they're so stoked to follow you too, but I guess the movie can't afford that shit. <laughs> so she just puts on the hives. Which would make also- more sense. But I mean, also, do 2008 yeah, with the it's, hives? It's a little late for the yeah. hives. Yeah. I mean, it's a little late. Like, I, they never stuck an album on my iPod, but I mean, it's 2008. I still say switch it because I'm dealing with the idea that these 70 year olds just want to bone the shit out of Bono. <laughs> and I can't take it. Don't you mean Bono? Bono. <laughs> and the Arch. <laughs> yeah, the Arch. The Arch. <laughs> Come on. This is just getting out of hand, the odds. <laughs> we didn't invent the way they talk. That's true, we did not. That's true. We do, it's very important again because she's such a sweet little girl at 17. Yeah. We have to, before she stops being a character for 90 minutes of the movie, we're like, so you're a virgin, right? Okay, cool. And that's glad we got that out of the way. Thanks for clearing well, that up. We're going to come back around to that later just to <laughs> double check. But uh, yeah, it's good to know. Good to know. And also, they make a point. Amanda, her friend, is like, ooh, I can't wait to have sex with Peter. It's yeah. like, I have to go watch Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> <laughs> and she hides in the bathroom. And this is where the Taken call starts. Uh, this is where the yeah. Takening happens. Because well, yeah. he's all pissed because he's like, she was supposed to fucking call me. And he's calling her. He's blowing up her phone like left and right. And Absolutely. He, he also calls Femke Jansen at one point. Yes. And she's like, don't fucking call here. Ever <laughs> and that's kind of like one of her only remaining scenes in the film. There's yes. like one or two more. Yeah. But one and- of them is don't fucking call here ever again. <laughs> I just took my Ativan, please. <laughs> You're going to wake up Stuart. <laughs> and uh, so Stuart. like, yeah, this is the very famous fo- scene. <laughs> Where he, he finally calls her, and she, he's like, you know, you were supposed to call me. We find out that the cousins that Amanda was supposed to be staying with are out of town. So now Maggie Grace is a little uncomfortable as, you know, who is going to change her diaper at this point. <laughs> it's uh, important. It's an important and, job. And so she's real worried well, about Amanda's that. not going to do it, too. They already had that talk on the plane. <laughs> she's her daughter's girl. She pees in her pants <laughs> just like I do. <laughs> 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 mm-hmm. And this is, you know, it's a cool... It's a big old house where you could sort of see someone get kidnapped from across the way, which is nice. I love. I that. always wish I always had 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 that feature in a house, you know. Yeah. 
where I'm standing in one room and somebody else is getting kidnapped, but I'm not kidnapped yet. I guess what is it, like a courtyard situation? Yeah, totally. You get a window into your own house. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Karen and Gregory are looking in downtown <laughs> Paris to find a new flat for themselves. They're hoping to rent a square-shaped entire floor of an apartment building that has a big courtyard right in the middle so you can look across the way and see if she's ever getting taken. Mo- it has to be close to downtown, but with a yard big enough for the dogs to run around and maybe someday kids to play. The- it took us 15 minutes to get to House Hunters last <laughs> night. This yeah, time, yeah. 30. Not bad, I <laughs> say. Their, their, their must-haves include no locks whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's just the best in schadenfreude television, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I don't sure. know what to tell you. Divorces at the end of every episode. Yeah. It's got to be, right? They're Especially all, international. Well, that's the thing. They're all divorce prequels, which you don't see often. <laughs> Usually that's you're seeing true. divorce sequels. That's true. Yeah, welcome back to Prelude to a Divorce. I mean House Hunters International. <laughs> and, um, you know, so she's like, oh, yeah, Dad, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know, I'm still mad about the U2 thing. And, like, then, you know, Amanda's dancing in the room. She gets kidnapped. Uh, Maggie Grace gets really worried and he's like oh and I, I love he has this look on his face if you watch this movie as many times as I had to for this stupid show he has this look immediately he's like oh my god they, they took Amanda and he's like oh and immediately he's like well I guess my daughter's getting kidnapped like he's like he's yep. right there right there immediately yep totally it's like ah, another taking isn't it <laughs> fuck Gonna lose that second bodyguard job I told the guys I'd help out with because me stupid daughter got taken. And he's like, you know, go to the other room. I, I, I got some bad, I got some good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is you're not gonna be seeing YouTube on YouTube on concert. <laughs> the bad news is you're gonna get taken. I'm so sorry. Oh. What? All right, so all right, real quick. Yeah. Seeing you two in concert or uh, getting kidnapped by somebody? I don't know these guys. And you return, like... you return totally safe. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. now or or yeah. earlier eighties. <laughs> Everyone is yelling kidnap. <laughs> right now. It's important. Let you me know, make up my no, own no, no, mind. No, 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 it. no, 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 no. It's not like Joshua Tree era. It's okay. Like Elevation. <laughs> okay. Yes, exactly. I don't have to hear like, a fucking beautiful day. <laughs> I would rather be fucking sold to a sultan or whatever happens yeah. at the end of this fucking whatever that movie. is cuz i whatever cannot happens. listen i cannot spend a fucking dime to hear that guy go 1 2 14 in that fucking <laughs> song this is a true story about that song it came on the radio once i was driving in upstate new york and i was like ah oh, fuck i hate this song distracted by the music i hit a deer <laughs> Dude, and in that moment, you were like, fuck, I wish I was that deer. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, boy, that deer got elevation. <laughs> and then, excellent, as, excellent. As I pulled over and the deer bled to death on the side of the road, uh-huh. the echoing of you two through the forest. <laughs> <laughs> then I got in the car and drove away. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, ooh, oh, uh yeah, great. so she gets taken, or she's about to get taken, and he's right. like, you know, and she's also, I, I, I kind of feel like if my, if I was on the phone with my dad, they're gonna get kidnapped. I'm like, is there anything I could do right now? Oh no, oh, no, no. No, 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 no. Should I try locking the door? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what if I tried to jump out this window? No, no, you're just going to <laughs> I, be taken. What if I start looking for a gun? <laughs> nope, anywhere. Take it, take it. It's already happened. Okay. Well. I don't know why you're even talking to me anymore, Taken Girl. I'm going to be start calling you Taken Girl. You are so Taken right now. Baby Taken. <laughs> oh, little baby Taken. Look out. But then taken he, Juniors. Uh-huh. He then gets out his little black CIA book and like <laughs> records the conversation and yep. tells her to yell out the clues well, or yeah. whatever. It's like, we're playing charades. Hon- <laughs> honey, I need to know how hot he is. If he has any tattoos. We're going to do it like the bard game Guess Who, all right? Does he Any go- mustaches? <laughs> yeah. Glasses? Do they have glasses? Yell out if they have glasses. Is he a big fat guy with a red pointy beard like that other freak in that Guess Who game? They really made those people look like weirdos, huh? <laughs> I don't know what you know what they were is if you tried to like draw like a slightly more photorealistic weeble. Yes, exactly. That's what they, ask your grandparents about weebles by yeah, the yeah, way. Yeah. Sorry about that. I feel young tonight. I don't know what that is. 
Well, let's see, they wobble, but they don't fall down. Mm. Ooh, they yeah. were little, like, Danny DeVito-shaped, like, Matryoshka <laughs> doll kind of things. And you could, like, flick them, but they wouldn't fall down. They'd go you, like could, you could flick them at Zappers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where all the good Weeble porn is at. <laughs> so he gets, I mean, like, also the weird thing is, like, so, like, she, she gets kidnapped, and he, he gets on the phone. You saw it in the trailer. He does that whole spiel. He does say, oh, I don't have a lot of money. Like, but Stuart does be like, yep. hey, man, uh, how, how do we get out of this situation? What's it going to cost for, you know what? And also, I'm a human being for my daughter and Amanda. Uh, by the way, <laughs> nope. I'm kind of responsible Amanda for her, too. Amanda is maybe. not involved at all in this. No. And also, nope. it's so funny that he's just like, listen, I have no money. Fuck you. <laughs> do whatever you want to her. <laughs> oh, that would give Stuart the upper hand. That's not happening. But that goes back to the fucking cab line at the airport. Like, do you want this blue one? No, my dad is a billionaire. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> exactly. I have a debit card with $100,000 on it. Eat shit. How do they not have the guy with the little fucking Yes, sign? exactly. The little- Dead meat one and two. <laughs> <laughs> but he does not look for a man. He's like, it's because like you better let my daughter go. The blonde is yours. I mean, hey, look, I, I, <laughs> look, look. I, I, I'm a businessman. You're a businessman. <laughs> you keep one. Just give me back what once was mine. <laughs> before that fucking Stuart came in. It's not a two for one special. No. <laughs> uh, but you, you know, and he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. And he's like, Good luck. <laughs> I love that good luck, man. What a delivery. It's awesome. It's almost as good as the Star Fox. Good luck. <laughs> boo, 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 bad. Exactly. Bip, 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 bip taken. <laughs> uh, Someone should kidnap that fucking frog. Oh, that? dude, absolutely. <laughs> Falcor. <laughs> Help me. No, I'm not. Slippy, you shithead. I'm only going to help the fucking rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> the toad is all yours. They found, the, they found the frog dead, drugged up at a construction site. <laughs> Andros did it. Uh, I'm so glad all these Star Fox references are playing. Well done. Uh, <laughs> well done, folks. And uh, <laughs> so he immediately goes, and I mean, like, the first thing, you, you knock on Stuart's door, and you'll be like, listen, everybody sit down. She got taken. Or I would, I, would, I, would, I would even say she was kidnapped because that's how human beings talk to one no, another. No, no, dude. You got to come to that fucking front door like the town choir, like, Taken! <laughs> there was a Taken! Hello, he, Taken! Liam Neeson has a huge bell coming in. <laughs> totally. He fucking buries the lead. He's in the house for 10 minutes. And then he's like, oh, by the way, she was taken. Because he comes in. He comes in and he's just talking shit to Stuart. He's like, I fucking looked up all your shady business dealings, Stuart. Do you have any enemies? Anyone want to kill you out there? That's right, Stuart. You're all over Hunter Biden's laptop. (laughs) (laughs) It's photos. It's photos of him smoking crack in the bathtub. (laughs) And you... I and saw you draw a little happy smiley face on his penis. So yeah, he's like talking about like Stuart had some like Russian oil deal that went tits up. Don't worry, it doesn't really matter at all. And then he's like, oh yeah, she got taken. Uh, anyways, Bam yeah. Jensen's like, wait, the fuck did you say? <laughs> taken where? Oh, you know what I mean, taken. Well, like to the Louvre? Taken. Oh, like to the Eiffel Tower? Oh, taken. Oh, to the Arc de Triomphe. Take it. Are you trying to say kidnapped? <laughs> Take it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Stuart, you got to get me an airplane to Paris an hour ago and a time portal. <laughs> <laughs> dude, this is kind of like, he's so excited to make this dude eat shit. He's like, finally, Stuart, the day has come. You're working for me now. <laughs> Book me a fucking plane. Now you're my travel agent, Stuart. <laughs> Just shut up and let me enjoy this minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. All right, my daughter was kidnapped. Back to work. Uh, Erection then, down. Time to get to work. When he's on this airplane, he's just listening to good luck over and over he's, again. It's pretty cool. But he, I want, like, the flight attendant that's stuck fucking dealing with this guy. Like, oh, uh, a sixth scotch, Mr. Neeson. <laughs> Yeah. Good luck. By the Good yeah. luck. Good luck. That's the thing, is it's not like headphones or anything. It's blaring in his ear. So anybody who walks by is just hearing good luck. But good luck. That- and this weirdo sitting alone in this plane. But it's not all that, but it's like she's screaming and crying. He's yeah. like, yep, uh uh-huh, uh, that's my daughter getting taken. <laughs> Listen, it's for work, okay? 
Jesus. The flight attendant like goes into the fucking cockpit and is like, uh, so this dude's listening to a real gnarly tape out there. Are we going to Epstein's Island again? <laughs> Some twisted that's, shit on this tape. No, that's next week. <laughs> next week on Taken. Uh, he, get, he gets to Paris and he starts fucking tearing shit up. He's like, <laughs> he's doing a bunch of Batman shit that comes to nothing. Like he's getting shirt fabrics from somewhere. Yeah, that goes yeah. nowhere. He's also like going into the rooms, like listening to the tape, like, oh, she wasn't here when this part happened or whatever. Like he's a fucking psychic but trying I, to I, feel I, vibes. If you, It's just to, to remind you, if you weren't watching the movie five minutes ago, <laughs> here's what happened. If you're just joining us for Taken. The inciting incident yes, will yes. remind you of it. <laughs> but I love that the kidnappers walk in no problem. They can get into this place. And he's like, oh boy, I don't have the passcode. I'll stand outside with a bag of baguettes like a Frenchman. <laughs> and I'll walk in when someone comes out. Dude, him with like these fake groceries is so awesome. He's just got all these like fancy pastries like looking around. <laughs> but it's great. I blend in, right? He's using the grocery bag to like hide his face, which like I guess if you were like, you know, Steve's height and you have like a big thing of groceries and whatnot, you could play it off. But this is a big ass Liam Neeson Frankenstein yeah. motherfucker. Yeah. And he's holding this huge bag of groceries seven feet in the air. <laughs> Just doesn't work. And Pick the lock, you're a spy. Grocery gags. And meanwhile, we found out from Leland Dorser, one, uh, that they'll have 96 hours to find her or else like she's not coming back, which is a, a vague estimate, I would say. And <laughs> two, the Albanians have her. Whoa. Dun, dun, dun. I love how every movie that has Albanians in it pretends that they invented Albania. <laughs> and they have to explain. It's like, it's a fucking country with a lot of people in America. <laughs> it's fine. We've figured it out. No, no, the exotic Albania. You've never heard of it in Hollyweird. <laughs> Jim Belushi cries at every one of those movies. Yes. We were real people. Because <laughs> of course they are. It's so fucking dumb that this movie's like treating them like it's a fake country, like it's fucking commando or something. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, but so they're looking for, uh, you know, he he takes a bunch of stuff. He's got, he finds her phone, which has a picture of this asshole on it. It's yeah. well, in the reflection of a thing in the background of the airport, and he enhances it at a kiosk? No. A, a kiosk that's buried in a subway station. Yeah. Also, we should mention Liam Neeson, fan of disposable cameras in 2008, going to all these one-hour fucking photo shops. Yeah. This movie was written in the early 90s, and nobody updated the draft. Nobody bothered. Uh, yeah, this movie was probably written for Van Damme, which also a better movie, well, by the way. Oh, that You're going be to be taken. <laughs> <laughs> now the accents match. So oh, no, oh. that would be like go. He would his kids would be going to America. And, <laughs> sure, and then yeah. he'd have to come here and kill a bunch of shady Americans, which would be cool. Not bad. That's all right. Not bad. But apparently, the original casting was Jeff Bridges. That's right. <laughs> he dropped out. He was he's literally cast. All right, man, you're just gonna get taken, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man, someone snagged my daughter. <laughs> he finally got to play that in Crazy Heart, though. <laughs> hey, dude, they're taking your daughter, man. <laughs> oh, that kid really tied the room together. <laughs> no, woo, pissed on the kid, man. <laughs> Oh, that one was disgusting. Uh, Walter, will you stop talking about Afghanistan? It was eight fucking years ago, man. <laughs> I, I mean, question mark better movie? Maybe. I just can't imagine him like break, like Jeff Bridges <laughs> breaking someone's neck. How no, does that work? No, no that's a oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hold fucking still. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, it just wouldn't work. I'm it's glad not, he dropped no, out. No, it's not. Oh, wait a second, though. So is there an alternate timeline somewhere where he takes the gig and now he's, he's doing all them Liam Neeson movies? Yes, he's uh -huh. taking driving a fucking snowplow now. <laughs> Walk amongst the tombstones, man. Oh, this movie's nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take the train to work. I'm a commuter now. <laughs> Fuck. I can't run all night. Yeah, how many more can we do? I, <laughs> you can feel that running out of gas yeah. where it's like all those titles sound the same. Hey, man, they got little hands and fingers to get in there and clean the ammunition. 
Yeah. But, Schindler's Schindler's list. List. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing about Jeff Br- Jeff Bridges is if he told you a story about the 1970s while he was messed up in an interview about him walking along along the streets looking for something. It'd be marijuana, and it would, it would fucking rule. That would be It'd nice. be a fucking cool story. Oh, totally. As opposed to other stories that assholes like to tell oh, yeah, for man. no fucking reason. Oh, yeah, man. I was just looking to score. Exactly. And it would have some, like, weird left field twist where it'd be like, and then I turned a corner and met Peter Cushing. <laughs> Really nice guy, honestly. <laughs> Smoking weed with Peter Cushing, that'd be something. That'd huh? be fucking that'd dope. You may fire that blunt when ready. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. Say that later tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, he finds Peter. Peter's running this game that he has on on some like lady from Sweden or something. It's like, do you want to split the cab? It's so she's... expensive. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got his script down, dude. He totally does. At that point, you'd think like the transit cops. Someone would be like, this guy's here every day. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. This guy's always looking to split cabs. What's his problem? Oh, he's a kidnapper. Oh, And <laughs> if, if fucking, you know, Neeson was smart, he would, like, follow the cab and then abduct this guy later in the day. But he just, like, does it at an airport and everyone is looking. Something tells me um, if you are in, like, the parking, like, the arrivals area of an airport, and you take a guy by the back of his head and smash it against the hood of a car, someone's saying something. <laughs> I, you know, I that's love- just me, but I think someone would be saying, I think that guy's beating that guy up. I just love how he shoves him in the back of the taxi and says drive, and the cab driver obviously isn't going to do that. <laughs> Why would he's he like, do that? What do you think, this is America? No, I'm going to no. leave my fucking cab, you idiot. You have to put a gun up to my head before you ask that. <laughs> Before, is this where he uh, gets the other dude like pulls him out of the car yeah. and Liam Neeson kicks him right in the dick? Yes, nice moment. It's cool. Nice moment. Fucking dead hit on that. And this guy Peter gets Final Destination killed by a truck, which kind of <sighs> rules. Oh, it's I love so it. awesome. It's like that great blend of like it's brutal and it's fucking hilarious. And I think may have been reserved for the unrated cut only. Oh, interesting. Oh, really? Yeah. So we watched the one true cinema. Well, I mean, he, it's hilarious because that must have been the best moment of that guy's life. You just outwitted a, a super spy. You jumped off a fucking bridge onto a truck, survived it. You're like French Batman. And you're just like looking like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It is hilarious. Yeah, he is just, it's uh, like, who gets that death? Sean William Scott in Final Destination? Yes, yeah, he gets it right. Actually, that whole series is people getting hit by cars. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and like, oh, shit, that's my only lead. Like, yeah, you should have fucking, you know, came, it eased up a little bit. And again, he just like sashays away. Yes. There's no fucking like airport police. There's nothing like you caused a huge traffic jam. This dude jumped off this thing and that guy <laughs> definitely got hit by a truck. I- I don't know, man. There was like a, a nine foot monster and he was doing stuff. It's definitely not a human. I don't know what it was. I'm not following him. Was it an alien? <laughs> it might have been. Dude, he kind of looks like an alien. I forgot to mention it, but the dye job this guy's Ooh, got in this it's movie. Bad. It's insane. Looks like he's about to pull a fucking Rudy Giuliani and start melting. <laughs> it's disgusting. I got a very specific set of skills. <laughs> it's being a lion piece of shit. <laughs> getting drunk yeah. it's getting sued <laughs> <laughs> and uh he goes to his french contact or whatever this guy jean claude dude Jean-Claude. from the old days yeah. and the this torture guy, days the all or nothing <laughs> days. <laughs> they gave this guy like like one page where it's like i don't know just talk about how you now have a desk that's your job it's just like it's like i can't do nothing of all these desk jobs i have Oh, it's a desk. The desk. The desk. It's Not related. only do I work behind the desk, but I work for someone who works behind the desk. And that guy works for a guy who works behind the desk. And that guy, he just works for a desk. <laughs> it's very weird here in France. I live in the desk. <laughs> it's pretty relatable, I think, right? What? <laughs> Living well, in a desk? Sounds like a desk job, and then your boss is a desk job. I got what he was saying. <laughs> But that's just all to, like, uh, diminish this guy's virility. Like, uh, Liam Neeson's out there doing the stuff. Yeah, he's that's also true. Like, 
Oh, you must have fucked up when you got to a desk. He's always like giving him shit for it. He's like, no, actually, I get to spend time with my family, and that causes me not to get divorced. <laughs> See, that's just how that well, works. Th- he, there's a moment where he's like, oh, you slipped up and you forgot the the exact weight of a gun with bullets in it as compared to one without bullets in it. You're not a psychotic anymore. <laughs> It's a weird moment where he's basically like, yeah, I hope someone got fired for that blunder. <laughs> he was like, I don't know, man. He's not a fucking paid assassin anymore. Who cares? He's got kids, man. Shut up. He winds up going to, he gives him a lead to this like weird car park prostitution ring thing that's really crazy. Well, he, shakes, well, he shakes down a prostitute that's right, yes. in order to get, and then he puts a bug on the pimp. Yes. And he yeah. gets this Albanian translator to just listen to Pimp Talk. <laughs> Welcome think, back to Pimp Talk. That would be a huge podcast, I think. Mm-hmm. Pimp Talk? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. New project from Eric Siska. <laughs> no, we're not going to try to figure out what that would sound like. <laughs> no, we're not going to bother. <laughs> nope. Uh, there, yeah, there's some alleys you don't walk down. <laughs> uh, and this is, yeah, this is when they get to the park. Like, basically, like, uh, the Albanian translator is like, oh, they're going to this car park. That's where they take their ladies. And it's this weird thing where, like, the line is around the block. First of all, it's a construction site. Got and it. what the dude says is, oh, he says he has to go back to work at the construction site because there's new product in. And Liam Neeson is like, ah, yes, France's famous construction site. There's no, like, tailing the guy. Oh, no. The translator doesn't get a name of the construction site. There's no address. It's just the construction site. I would like to think like he burst through five of them first yeah, yeah. before <laughs> finding this one. Where are the prostitutes? We're just building a bridge, man. <laughs> Fuck, I lost 20 hours going around French construction sites. <laughs> what a waste of time. I should have fucking followed the one guy. <laughs> and yeah, this is where everybody is. Uh, all these ladies are like drugged up and he looks and one of them has this ja- this bejeweled jacket this girl Dude. has to wear again because she's like, man. I'm 17. <laughs> She got like fucking buckshot from a bedazzler. This yeah, yeah. Like, jacket. It's like Minnie Mouse rules on the yeah. back or something like that. It's like, you're old enough to get insurance on a rental car in your fucking Mickey Mouse jacket. Come on. Bedazzled but, shit, man. But apparently it's some other girl uh, that he doesn't give a shit about immediately. No, no, but it's, a, it's she's like an information vessel, so better keep her alive for that reason and that reason alone. Well, this is when he starts, this is when probably the first scene where he is like just murdering people. The body count in this movie, at least IMDb tells me, is 35. <laughs> Take Which is that, a, Jason Voorhees. It's a lot. And Your I, fucking Bush League kill count. <laughs> amateur. Oh, amateur. I thought you were saying armchair. <laughs> no, he's an amateur. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I like uh, that. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> ripping people apart in this scene. Yeah, right? This is where he really kind of like, you know, yeah. starts taking a little bit here. Because that one chase scene with the guy's like nothing. This is like where he's really breaking necks, getting like knives and throats and whatnot. You know, what you paid for. Yeah, the good that stuff. shit. I mean, again, if it was Jeff Bridges, can I buy you some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go down. You tell me where my daughter is, man, well, and we'll just call it a day. What's happening in this place, man? <laughs> shit. I mean, Let's go catch something at the last picture show. <laughs> Neeson got so lucky here because none of these guys can hit him with bullets for some reason. No, no there are, not there's a like single machine one. guns happening. Dude, the these cars are go- riddled and okay. nothing happens because they're in the stormtrooper program. Yeah. Like, I feel that's what it was. They're like spraying this fucking car with yeah. machine guns. Oh, and it drives bu- fine. Don't worry about it. But at least, it. like, they're. I don't know, dude. It. I, to Stormtrooper's credit, it must be hard to shoot Mark Hamill at a distance. He's a tiny man. You know what I mean? Like, yep. you a really got to squint. But those those masks aren't helpful. But fucking Liam Neeson. My also, God. Always remember that Albanians always travel single file to hide their numbers. <laughs> Which is essentially what uh, the French detective guy says, because he's like, I don't know how many Albanians are in this country. They fucking single file in here. <laughs> And now they've ruined my country. It's kind of, it kind of sucks this way. This guy's like, first there were five or ten of them. Now there's 500. Albanians. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't kind of suck. It sucks, too. <laughs> it, it is pretty bad. It's gross. Um, it's a it thing got- that you can do if you're using a fake country, mm-hmm. which I guess the writers of this movie maybe thought Albania was at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Wait, but that's if you're real? using a real country, you shouldn't do that. No. What, uh, a whole country that's just Albany? No. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't exist. Oh, my God. Don't let me get taken to Albany. <laughs> no, it's... Dude, because you will get out by the skin of your fucking teeth. Let us tell you. Yes. <laughs> uh, instead, instead of giving you heroin, they hook you up to buffalo wings, I suppose. Someone approaches yep. you and says, do you want to not split a cab? Because they're so cheap here. <laughs> We're just going to sit you here and you're going to have to listen to Mario Cuomo talk <laughs> for a long oh, time. Oh, the father. Oh, <laughs> oh, the fucking father. Oh, He's even worse. Let's do some more New York jokes for yeah. everyone in Chicago. Governor! from 30 years ago jokes. Woo! Fuck uh, that whole fucking family, by the way. Absolutely. Every last one of them. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> and what? He just rips these, uh, these dudes apart. I don't know what really This is, well, it's a car chase. And here's the thing. Oh, yes. Like, I'm coming to this movie for like, Close quarters, stabbing, and neck breaks and whatnot. Car chases you can leave out of yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And that, it just kind of does a little car chase here. Destroys the whole construction site, so sorry that children's hospital isn't being built. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and also, uh, that part of his very special set of skills is not just electrocuting men's testicles. It's also putting people through detox, which is really helpful yeah, yeah. and kind of sweet. He, he cleans like, his girl up. Yeah, yeah, he does, which is nice. Only because she's got information on his precious baby daughter property. That's but true. That's once true. Once we get that information, she vanishes. I, what did I, he do? I, he might have killed her yes. to like cover his tracks. Oh, right. He doesn't want the like the Albanian yeah. mafia following there him. There like a scene of him dumping a garbage bag <laughs> off a bridge. Just a, a really big rug. Yeah. He's just carrying down to France. Yeah, you shouldn't have taken her jacket, so... Uh, <laughs> Chuck, what? sorry. I mean, if you had been me daughter, I would. Well, you know. All right. <laughs> bye, bye. You're the river's problem now. <laughs> is this... well, that's where it would go. Yeah. Is this when in in the 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 construction site? Is that when we find Amanda dead, and no, nary a tear is shed? Well, it's later. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. it is later. All right, that's fine. We'll get yeah. there. Let us figure out the continuity. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask for help when needed. Uh -huh. It's all right. But he, uh, whatever, he, uh, blah, blah, blah. He's a, he, get, he, he detoxes her. I think the French guy, again, it's basically like, I want you to leave town. Here's a, f a first class ticket out kind of a thing. Oh, yeah. This is where he really, like, fucking fools these guys because they're all, like, raiding where he's going to be. And it's, uh oh, the cell phone's up against the little walkie talkie. But cleverly amusing. Meanwhile, he's like, he's like a block away on the tallest tower, the tallest man in France. <laughs> The Iron Giant is like 30 feet from you. <laughs> it's really something. Like, he couldn't even be bothered to crouch. No. He's standing in all his seven foot Frankenstein glory, like a God fake damn. mustache or something. Glasses. Totally. At least sunglasses. <laughs> yes. Uh, and you know, also because you could spot that dye job from space. That's the other thing. Just, like, get that. That's out how there. the Here's aliens that. got me. It's like as red as that fucking zany sign back yeah. there. My God. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he does. He he makes his way to like a safe house where the sort of like the hideout they call it the red house or yes. whatever. That's the tip that the the woman coming off the H oh, gives that's right. him. Like, oh, I remembered something about it. the house with the red door at uh, Rue de Paradis. Yeah, is, yeah, is yeah, where yeah. it is. So yeah, he goes, yeah. and this is he starts fucking these dudes up. He finds the guy, the fucking good luck guy. This is where he finds him. This is in, This is like the it's, it's most, the dumbest part of the movie because he's impersonating a French cop. In English, with this fucking brogue. Yeah, my name's John Paul Partier. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. This guy, this like, you know, criminal guy, like, does not blink once. He's just like, well, it's a business. It's not even a badge. A badge is not presented. It's a business card that's yeah. like, trust me, I'm a cop. Uh, my name is Jean Paul O'Grady. Uh, <laughs> oh, that, well, that's just the EU for you. Oh yeah, they're all moving around now. <laughs> Got to get out of that thing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's like, oh, you know, he's like pretending to shake them down. And the the funny part of this scene is he's trying, like, it's a whole bunch of people sitting around the table. He's like, one of these guys is my good luck guy, and I don't know which. So I need to keep asking them different questions to get them to say something. And he's got this. You see him like the scene before, like he's in the hotel room. He, he's he got an English to Albanian dictionary 
and he's like doing language homework and you realize what it is, is he gives this piece of paper to this dude he's like oh uh me friend gave me a little piece of paper with some Albanian on it don't ask why but can you tell me what it says and the guy reads it and says good luck and then he just opens fucking fierce rage on all of these guys this might be, the, might be the best scene in the movie even though it makes no sense because of the violence the sheer violence we get out of this scene totally and he pretends to be a dead body stuck under another dead body which is an awesome move just icing oh, these yeah. dudes let me just take this other dead body we used to call this a blanket in the industry <laughs> And this is where he finds the dead friend is is yep. in here. And, and adios, she's never mentioned again. Yeah, it's never like, hey, I guess I have to go to Amanda's parents' house and let them know where her body is yeah. or something. There's zero grief for this. Because I think he blames her. Like, yeah, fuck yes. you, Amanda. Uh, it sounds more like a Stuart problem, if you it's ask like, me. Well, you know, today I won't be pissing in my pants. Instead, I'll be pissing on her corpse. <laughs> Yeah, he finds, he's checking her pulse, and then it just cuts to, like, a garbage fire and him staring at it. <laughs> All of your loose morals got us here, Amanda. You were the real U2 fan. You're, by the way, I almost called it U2. <laughs> I want to be clear about that. Dude, that's when they play Tricky. shows on Halloween, man. It's U2. Because <laughs> that music is scary as fuck year-round. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, whatever. Oh, this uh, is, well, this is, dude, he, Marco from Trapoya. This is like the lead dude. And it's like, this movie has a couple of built in commercial breaks, which is awesome. Mm. And it's like, you know, they fade to black, and then it's like, next time on Taken. And it opens, and he's got those fucking nails that he's jamming into this dude's thighs. Ooh, good times. I, wouldn't you just die immediately? Once a nail goes in my knee, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'm gone. I'm checking out, dude. I'm checking right out. Absolutely. That's it. I'm done. And all these divorced dads are just jacking off in the theater. Oh, uh, yeah. Fucking it's just, get it. Yeah, jam that thing. I, I get I, it. Yeah. I was just about to do that to my assistant manager. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Real zappers move here when he turns on the electricity and starts frying this guy. Yeah. Good line here about like, oh, you know, here the uh, you flick a switch and it stays on all day. Yeah. I used to have to pull out fingernails yeah. and drop acid on people. <laughs> Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. The, the Dulles brothers taught me well. <laughs> See, but that is a weird thing, right? Whereas if this was like just slightly more competently made, you could be like, oh, he's like an anti-hero. But yeah. the movie is like, this dude kicks ass. This dude will always fucking kick ass. And he is like the great new American cowboy. Yeah, take it, take it to him, take it, get him, get him taken. <laughs> Oh, my favorite part was when Taken took that dude, made him cry like I would to my boss and my mother. I do think that's what the fans of this movie are calling him in Taken. the street. Oh, <gasps> Taken man! <laughs> Taken man! Bro, I saw Taken on the fucking street. <laughs> what? The guy, Taken! Tekken? No, no Taken! Taken. Oh, dude, fucking Liam Neeson is a selectable character in Tekken. That dude would fuck shit Ooh, up. Absolutely. Final Huge boss. reach. Huge yeah. reach. Yeah. Tekken, Tekken? Tekken, Tekken. Or Tekken, Tekken. Tekken, Tekken, Tekken. Tekken. Mm. Tekken. Oh, oh, I'm doing TikTok on Tekken. Ooh, I'm doing Tekken, TikTok, Tekken. There's a dude that should definitely be on TikTok. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. No. Uh, he's a little old. He'd be on like tic tac toe instead or whatever. The last thing you want to do is give that guy a fucking hot mic, dude. Yeah, the yeah. last thing you want to do. The last thing. Uh, yeah. So that's this true. is uh, my latest pissed pants. <laughs> Doing a dance here. Yeah, no, we don't be dancing. The piss pants dance. That Absolutely. could become a TikTok trend, actually. Do the piss pants challenge. Oh, yes, dude. Hey, Zoomers out there, piss pants challenge on TikTok. Do it. Go ahead. All the cool kids are doing it. <laughs> and he tortures this guy enough till he gives him the information because torture is a good thing and gets mm-hmm. you exactly what you need. Oh, every single time. It works flawlessly yes. every single yes. time. So and he, then he leaves the switch on, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, he gets a name from this dude, I forget, uh, what, St. Clair. And yes. then go, we go to this uh, Jeffrey Epstein gala here. No, this thing. <laughs> but first we have to go... Fuck up that French cop's house. Oh, yes. Oh, oh what a, what this a is. beautiful scene. Scene is bonkers, oh, and man. I have no idea who it's for. I don't. I do, I do not. It's for me. Uh, okay. No, specifically. <laughs> Finally, something. I think for- it's pretty fun to see this guy. Like they're having this nice like dinner. The wife's very gracious. Uh-huh. Oh, Brian, it's so great to see you again. 
and he just shoots her in the arm. <laughs> It is kind of awesome. It's one of those things where, so like Jean-Claude comes home and Liam Neeson's already there. So this guy knows he's totally fucked. And he's like, oh, you know, I got to go put the kids to bed. And he like reaches under their little trundle bed. And there's a gun under there because of course there is. And pockets that because he's ready to like attack this guy. And Liam Neeson like cuts right to the bullshit. He's like, you fucked me on this. You're fucking crooked. What's going on here? And the guy won't give it up. And he just immediately shoots this wife. And it is, I don't know, like the editing, what is going... Just the combination of everything coming together, it is the perfect storm to make the funniest fucking thing you see in this entire movie is just this hilarious shot in the arm and he's like, oh, it's just a flesh wound. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be a flesh right. wound. I fucking missed. And then he like, he forces Jean-Claude to like look up the guy on the computer and yes. then he knocks him out. We don't know what happens to that wife. She's just bleeding that yeah, place. Yeah. But Liam Neeson, he thinks he makes everything okay here. He goes, apologies to your wife. And then <laughs> fucking pistol whips this guy. <sighs> yeah, I'll tell her. Thanks for beating me half to death. You know, Jean-Claude, I don't, I actually like when your friends come over. You yeah. know what I mean? Usually they're nice guys. I mean, I would like some notice. I, you know, I want to make sure I have enough food in the house. That Brian, though, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have him back. Look, he's been going through some hard times. His daughter was taken. <laughs> I told you about the takening. See, it would have been more poetic, maybe, if he'd stole his little daughter. Yeah. Oh, and I Now you know eye, what huh? it's like. Yeah. Maybe now you'll get off your arse and help me find my daughter. Uh, this is when we go to the crazy Epstein gala, which Ooh, is, is like, I don't, I don't know what we're doing here. This is. Hey, I got a cool ticket to a new new party man awesome oh fuck it's in a french mansion and everything baby let's go better bring my debit card <laughs> hillary don't wait up i'm gonna be swiping all night <laughs> or something i don't know you think this is a cash only operation or what i know yeah, wire transfers and whatnot maybe. it's, it's pre-bitcoin oh, yeah that's true because yeah. now bitcoin is what you'd use to buy human slaves and all that <laughs> absolutely <laughs> that that's why that's why everyone's so obsessed with crypto. What do you think they're using it for? <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. It, but like, yeah, he's just going around. He's going, he's going around. You guys have fucking work it out at home. I don't know what the fuck's going on over here. Jesus Christ. Anyway, Steve, you were saying he's just going around this party and there it's this weird scenario he finds up in where it's like there's a room where a lady comes in and all these fucking creeps are in various octagonal shapes and oh, looking yeah, at them. Yeah. yeah, it's gross. It's, it's gross. really and gross. And like you're, you're, you're bidding kind of a thing. Yeah, no, you're pressing a little red button to, to bid on women. It's really horrible. Uh, and sort of like sucks the fun out of this conversation because we'll, we'll swing right through it well, though and get it over with. I will say it, it, it's nicely, it, it's like a big box at a sporting game. Like they bring you liquor. <laughs> sure. They bring yeah. you food if you want buffalo wings for the <laughs> sex trade. Chris is right. It did look very nice. <laughs> yes. I'm spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy people, but also look. I definitely need a plate of buffalo wings. Hey man, the buffalo wings here kind of rock. I'm not kidding. Holy fuck, it's all you can eat. <laughs> Fried raviolis, I'm there, brother. Man, just buying girls and eating potato skins. <laughs> fuck, baby. That guy ran the country for a while. <laughs> About eight years. For a great little while. Uh, and uh, he finds uh, the room with this one guy, and of course his daughter comes out, and then he's like, You've got to buy her, man. Hey, could you do me a solid? <laughs> What's awesome here, though, is like the ambivalence of all the other scumbag pieces of shit also participating in this auction. Because you can see everybody. They all have a clear view. And it's just like one old creep, another yes. old creep, another old creep. And then here's this creep with Liam Neeson with a gun to his head. And none of these guys are like, Hey man, is that guy fucking it up for the rest of us? <laughs> no, is this a cop? Like <laughs> in these extreme sex situations, you're just like, that's what he's into. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, he likes yep. to buy people with the big guy with the gun to his head, and the buffalo wings are there. Uh, I think a few booths down, like uh, you know, Trump is there. Like I've, I'm not gonna buy anyone because I've got one at home, Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just browsing. <laughs> <laughs> but these potato skins, mmm. <laughs> I do wish that Liam Neeson had, like, not gone straight for the gun and, like, just been in the... I don't know. I think she's kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> don't you think? Kind of good looking, huh? It might have worked better, right? Yeah, man, might have. Oh, yeah. You, or he, he does reverse psychology. You would never bid on that one. I she's think, too good for you. Uh, she's a little too hot for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, asshole. <laughs> So, like, he convinces this guy to successfully purchase his daughter. Yeah. Uh, 500 grand. It's 500 a good, real grand. bidding war. It's mm -hmm. gross. And mm -hmm. then I got outbid by some guy <laughs> with a gun to his head eating mozzarella sticks, baby. <laughs> Should have brought the Discover card with me. Well, we're not enemies yet, so just come over and use Ivanka. <laughs> She's like the toilet of the house. <laughs> Can I get some? Wow, wow. Yeah. All right, we're yeah. going to let, let that one breathe. Can I get some adrenochrome on the rocks? <laughs> this is a pretty cool party, oh, yeah. man. D let me just scrape it off Baron real quick. Ouch. Moving on. <laughs> hey, you know, just bo we're doing both sides, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. yeah. uh huh. <laughs> Fucking C. See? <laughs> Oh, those We Hate Movies boys give as good as they get. <laughs> We're fair and balanced. More than, more than Fox News. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so he gets kidnapped immediately. Or he gets like caught immediately, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, he's like knocked unconscious for he, like a half a second. This uh, brilliant military mind that's gone through all of the world killing kids and fucking <laughs> mothers <laughs> cannot look outside a hallway <laughs> when he's leaving the room. Couldn't do it. Then he gets it, killed. Well, a, he doesn't get killed. He, it's a great shot of him falling down. Yeah, it is kind of great because it's actually just hulking Liam Neeson falling over. Ooh, it's awesome. Oh, I and forgot like, to look behind me. <laughs> and the movie's trying to say something because the guy who's running the whole ring, this like French guy, is just like, hey, man, it's just business. And it's like, oh, wow. I've never seen that in a fucking action movie before. <laughs> Oh, just business was it? Oh, pardon me. I'll back <laughs> off. I, Excuse I, me. I'm I, sorry for ruining things. I had no idea. <laughs> oh, what, oh, shit. What do I owe you? I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just business. I, I had a few cocktail wieners. <laughs> Hans Gruber is just holding on to a thing. <laughs> it was just business. <laughs> oh, well, come on up I then. Sorry yeah, about I'm that. Sorry about that. My apologies. I didn't know it was just business. <laughs> Let me just pull this bullet out of you. <laughs> I mean, when he kills all those guys trying to, you know, he escapes from, he's he's going to be murdered by them. Yeah. Yes. And he kills them by, like, throwing fire extinguishers at them, which it's is pretty, pretty awesome. It's pretty great, yeah. Just hucking fire extinguishers. One goes off, or he, he breaks a pipe or something, yeah. so things kind of get, like, spooky for a second, I guess, <laughs> is the idea. And then he unloads his gun on this French pervert. <laughs> oh, man, it's awesome, though. Uh, man, it's great, but this is now, we're moving on to what I believe is the sixth villain of this yes, movie. Yes, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Just they keep kicking the can down the road, and I guess it's the uh, the cool in quotation marks thing. It's like, oh, in these worlds, there wouldn't be like a big scary villain. It would be everybody, and I get that. But like, it's a fucking dumb action movie. I need like yes. somebody. That I just I'm, need like, one guy. I that's need the him. guy I want to see die last. Yeah, I need him twirling his mustache, and it should have been the dude Marco from Trapoya from yeah. the middle of the movie. <laughs> yes. Give Marco from Trapoya, I don't know, a Gundam suit to fight Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That would do it. Marco. Then he'd be at least as tall as Liam yeah, Neeson. Yeah, yeah. Uh-oh, shit, it's Mecca Marco. I had no idea. <laughs> well, if you had Jeff Bridges in the movie, he could say, Marco from Trubaya <laughs> built this in a cave with a bunch of scraps. <laughs> I like it. I'm kind of coming around to this idea of Jeff Bridges being in Taken. I, I'm, I'm kind of into it. I'm fully in, I think. Dude, here's the thing, though. If if the sequel then happened, though, with Jeff Bridges in the lead role still, uh -huh. you'd have to do the Teen Wolf, like, taken T-O-O. -O, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's like Jeff Bridges with sunglasses on, like, <laughs> surfing on the poster for some reason. Because maybe it's like he's on vacation and then, like, someone gets taken. Taken vacation? There it is. Yeah, I'm oh, taken. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Now we figured it I out. I like it. Now I like it a lot. we figured it out. The so, third, the third one though has to be taken rides again, right? <laughs> Ooh, totally. Oh, yeah, he's on the horse that Stewart gave the daughter now. <laughs> it's mine now. 
And it's basically <laughs> City Slickers 2 for some reason. I was going to say Taken Grit. Oh, Taken Grit. Yeah. Taken Grit. Or the legend of uh, Marco's Gold. And it's <laughs> exactly. City Slickers 2. Now we're going to rob those Albanians. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He winds up on a boat where that she is now at, and they're, you know, there is this like, you know, I, I guess Saudi Arabian guy that's like bought her question mark. It's a it's a nondescript. We're just putting in an ethnic looking person yeah. is what the movie's doing. Make the actor. Look- the actor, though, this dude is like late in life Brando. Oh, this dude, guy. Yeah. holy shit. He's taken up the whole bed in this one <laughs> scene. He's it's literally job of the hut, pretty much yeah, in that scene, yeah. They make him gross. It's not needed, honestly. You have the knife maniac that he stabs into balls three times. Oh yeah, that's which also is fantastic. Pretty great. I'm taking your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is like, and so like now he's fighting this guy. I'm like, is this the last guy? Like no. And then like at the last thing is this guy, this Marlon Brando dude, has a knife to Maggie Grace's ch- neck. Like. We'll, we'll negotiate. He just shoots him in the head. I'm like, I guess the movie ended. Oh, uh, that's it? Was that it? <laughs> oh, that, oh, that was it. Oh. oh. Oh, all right. The guy has like one and a quarter lines. <laughs> yes. Yeah. His first line is, <laughs> And then the other line is, we could not go. And then that's it. And Liam yeah. Neeson shoots him in the fucking face. I need blood spatter of some yes. kind here, yeah. right? Yeah. One this- squib, I beg of you. I don't know who made squibs illegal, but stop doing that, please. Now we're talking. Yes, please. The most important part of the show. Thank you so much. Oh, oh. Tip oh, all you. of your waitresses. Yes. Tip your waitresses. Tip, tip well. Your... Tip often. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she, like, you know, Maggie Grace goes into his arms like, oh, thank you. And every divorced dad is in fucking blubbering tears. Like, I haven't hugged my daughter in years, man. (laughs) Maybe 10 Christmases from now, that'll be me. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, so all all right. So if (laughs) I was kicked out of Emily's last Thanksgiving for my horrible political beliefs, Mm -hmm. what if (laughs) she was taken by human trafficking? (laughs) And what if I arranged for that to happen so I could look like a hero? Maybe. Then Emily loves me, and that rotten bitch Martha has to eat it. Now, now and then Sean, you know what? Maybe my ivermectin stuff. I don't know. Maybe it's pretty cool. Maybe it's pretty. Neat. Slap some of it on a bagel. Eat it. I stole it from Stewart's horse. <laughs> now, Jean Claude, you have to understand. I'm going to have to shoot your wife for this to work. <laughs> This all hinges on me shooting your wife. It's a whole thing, really. Oh, I'm just sick over the whole... Hey, Jean-Paul, me again. (laughs) Uh, Noticing you're not taking my calls, buddy. Uh, Just want to let you know, uh, Maggie Grace is totally fine. We're back in America. I'm just sick about the whole shooting your wife thing. I uh, oh, I was in a dark place, and uh, you know, I hope I can talk to you before the new year. But Merry Christmas, <laughs> Julia Noel, the whole fucking thing. Yeah, again, the, my bad, gosh. my bad. The message comes up. Yes, this is Jean Claude. I am divorced now. Please do not leave any messages. <laughs> Yeah, you, you don't make that. That's not couples counseling. His friend shot me. After I asked him to open the wine. Uh, and then, like, what appears to be a real, like, tacked on ending. Because this movie, much like speaking of, you know, like Die Hard movies, like, just end, like, at the airport when they get home. But I guess to sort of, like, pretend as if trauma doesn't exist and she wouldn't be, like, horribly scarred for a long time. She again stupidly runs up to this door <laughs> and she's like, oh, daddy, what are we doing here? And he's like, you'll have to wait and see. And the door opens and it's this she lady again. And yeah. it's like, surprise, vocal audition. Like, no fucking way. Well, hi there. I'm she I heard a certain little girl was human traffic recently. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> Oh, my God, you're right. It was like a -a make-a-wish thing. (laughs) Now let's sit behind this piano and see if we can get some smiles on that face. (laughs) Like, fuck you, movie. (laughs) And you might even want to 
take this moment to hear what Maggie Grace sounds like singing. Nope. Nope. No. Credits. But I have to, if I'm recalling correctly, in one of the other movies, there's definitely like her in a recording studio. And I'm so thankful they continued her fucking journey to be a recording artist in this Taken franchise. Yeah, Yeah, they got Will I Am behind the board. It's a beautiful scene. (laughs) Oh, and that's the end of the movie, folks. There it is. That is all she wrote. Fucking movie. So we do have to be getting out of here, wrapping things up and whatnot. Um, But first of all, big thanks to all of you for coming out once again. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thanks again for the staff at Zany's. They've been great tonight. Give them a round of applause. And once again, thank you all for doing your part so you could fucking be here tonight and be here tomorrow, by the way. Yes. And by here tomorrow, I mean just on the fucking earth still, (laughs) all right? Uh, But before we get going, of course, as tradition here at We Hate Movies Live, we have to acknowledge that the best place to find intelligent, totally non-insane film writing on the internet is to go to the IMDb user review section. The best. Now we got a couple here tonight, written by totally unhinged people. Cool. Were you gonna say something, Steve? No, I said, "Ooh, I was excited about the IMDb." I oh was, yeah, get excited, I love dude! The IMDb's Crazy involved. fucking shit here. I have to figure out which one I want to read first. I think the one by Divorced Warrior Six 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 is the one we want. Yeah. All right, well, let's see. We we'll go. We'll go this one first. All right. <clears throat> One out of ten stars. Oh, no. (laughs) Are the reviews on this page legit or plants from the studio? And again, by page, he means the user review section of the internet movie database. I like how, like, 20th Century Fox or whatever the fuck (laughs) is paying an intern. Like, no, you've got to turn the tide on the IMDb user. Oh, my God, we're going to be sunk. (laughs) This was written in 2009. Oh, wow. Okay. So, okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Hot off the presses. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Judging from the reviews on this site, you would think Taken was this incredible nonstop thrill ride when, at best, all capital letters, it's a dis- disappointing rental. <laughs> Every aspect is far fetched beyond belief. We'll file that in the what? fucking no shit folder. I, you watch an action film? I just found out this is a movie. <laughs> you know, Mother, I watched this fascinating documentary last night called Taken. Mm-hmm. I thought my TV was a window. <laughs> they, got, they got some real problems yeah. over there. The nasty ex-wife, the rich stepfather that gives the stepdaughter anything. Anything? (laughs) That's where Xander Berkeley doesn't go in this movie, and you know what? That's fine. Yeah. (laughs) Head on over to Zappers for that movie. (laughs) Uh, uh, Who begs the lead for her help after he realizes he was wrong. The naive daughter who was kidnapped 20 minutes after getting into the country. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm with you there. Uh Uh, Then Liam Neeson springing into action and blowing up every and anything. Well, again, it's an action movie. What the fuck did you think you signed on for? (sighs) Every step of the way, this film never rises above cartoon status. Pretty sure it's a live action motion picture. (laughs) Oh, I get it. Uh, Reading the comments on this site, I'm frightened for the future of man. Finally, a sentence written in the user review section that makes sense. Well, gosh, Mick, she got taken. (laughs) Yuck. (laughs) Ha ha, good luck. (laughs) He would be the kid now. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, every step of the way, this film never... Oh, yeah, cartoon says, got that. Move on, drunk guy. Uh, reading the comments on this site, yeah, f- f- yeah, okay. Then again, Paul Blart Mall Cop was number one two weeks in a row at the box office, so I was already afraid for humanity. Yeah, all right. Sure. Okay. okay. I might have written that, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know what oh, I was doing. Oh, your divorced dad, 666? <laughs> I don't remember what I was doing in 09, man. <laughs> now, this is... This is truly something. 
10 out of 10 stars. Uh, this was written in July of 2008, so I think this is the real hot off the press. Okay. Yeah. Uh, subject line, Neeson is the vodka of James Bond's martini. What? <laughs> it's gonna, you know what, we're, we're, gonna, we're all going to think about that. <laughs> And then next week, right into the mailbag and see if you can figure that out. You're, you're going to be drinking. <laughs> huh? You're going to be fucking. I have a very special set of spirits. Uh, the most thrilling movie I've seen in a long, long mm. time. Neeson is what we would fear if James Bond went to hell and came back for revenge. Just go watch James Bond, you maniac. Who's already definitely going to hell. <laughs> oh yeah, James Bond is definitely going oh, to hell. Oh, straight to hell, straight to hell, dude. Move for discussion. Uh, then we got a parenthetical here. I doubt big budget quantum of solace will top this. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Man, this guy is grinding an axe against Daniel Craig. <laughs> Like to grind something else against Daniel Craig. I, I would do that too, anytime. Yeah. Bring it on, Danny. Uh, Danny. <laughs> That's my pet name for him. Got it. Uh, I loved Jason Bourne, but where Bourne is confused for half the movie, Neeson is looking down the barrel of a pistol three quarters of the time in a three way spy battle. I would, but now he's doing like fucking fantasy football with movie assassins. <laughs> they, none of them exist. They're all fake. They but, don't exist. But if they did, imagine that three way. Oh, yeah. No, they, they might not exist, but you cut to that fucking wrestling fan. It's real to me, goddammit. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, <sighs> in a three way spy battle, I would put Neeson edging out Bourne who would be a step above Bond. What the fuck are you even saying? What is this? A math equation? <laughs> and then the Flash would totally be Superman in a race, which is information everyone should have at the ready. <laughs> That's spot on. Yeah. That's this dude's other reviews. Oh, absolutely. That came later. All right, here we go. Between the jaw-dropping action sequences was the subject matter of international sex trafficking, which was pretty miserable to watch. <laughs> yeah, I love how this dude is like, this movie totally harshed my buzz. Yeah. <laughs> but he gave it 10 out of 10? 10 out of 10. Yeah. Even though his buzz was harshed. Yeah. Uh, pretty miserable to watch. Although killing is wrong. <laughs> man. <laughs> man. Although killing is wrong, death was never more satisfying to watch. We've been We Hate Movies from New York City, Thank Chicago. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. out. Much. Stay safe. You. We'll see you, you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was a HeadGum Podcast.